I think we are afraid of upsetting people and, and how we deal with the aftermath. Because you don't know how somebody's going to respond to that. But that's part of the professional role, is to know the person before you tell them, before you discuss it, get to know them. So our dad had probably had dementia for quite a while, but was officially diagnosed about six years before he passed yeah. away, after he had a stroke. We were effectively at that point told, well, you know, you should really put him in a care home now, otherwise we're just going to discharge you. With no or little information about dementia, no or little information about how to manage it afterwards, just about the physical outcome of the stroke. We did go through the discharge process, mm -hmm. but it was very much a tick box exercise. It didn't feel like we were really being asked, you know, how you were feeling about it, what do you want to do? Here's actually some places you maybe need to go to speak to people about it. It was very much, we need to take you through this process, you need to do X, Y and Z, you need to be assessed and off you go. Um, my mum has advanced Alzheimer's and my dad has vascular dementia. They both live in the same care home and I see them daily. My mum's um, at a stage in her life where we don't know literally how long we're going to have her for, so we're having to ask the questions, a bit like Catherine as well. We absolutely want the best thing for both of them. And it's a conversation that people don't have. Um, most of my conversations that have been about this tend not to have just happened. I've had contact with the person before. I just wanted her to feel comfortable and go comfortably because I know that's what she would want. Um, so it, Sharon and I had spoke about things mm -hmm. like that yeah. quite, quite openly. I think as well we'd spoken to Helen about uh -huh. it. I think it's something we do really well here uh -huh. because I think it's really important to do it when you're not faced with mm -hmm. it as opposed to waiting until you're faced with it and then you don't know what the person's wishes are. Um, it's not just a, a snapshot talking about that. There should be preparation, there should be some chance to talk around other issues before you address that particular one. When do you try and get that in place? Is it as, a, as soon as possible? Well, we don't wait till just the minute or say night, what's your end of life wishes. No, obviously we kind of get to know the person, get to know the family, and then it's something the key worker would sit and chat to them about and say, I know it's not something you want to think about, but, you know, we're caring for your, your dad and, or your mum, and it's really something that we need to speak about, because if this is their home for life, then that means end of life as well. And, at, any, you know, at any stage, did you sort of say, well, you need to start preparing for end of life and what that means? Never. No, it was never mentioned. And to be fair, I suppose we weren't necessarily thinking about it in quite as black and white terms. And you look at it retrospectively and you think, oh, why didn't I think of A, B and C? But you just, you're not emotionally in that space to think of it. You do need somebody to sometimes just put a mirror against mm -hmm. you, sometimes go, look at this, have you thought about this? Or do you see that in this way? And it's probably quite difficult to think about them at that time when you've just had a diagnosis. And it's something that you're going to have to have probably several conversations to actually take in all that you're being told and to start planning for the future. And if you're a family member and you're being cared for during that grief stricken period, you will always remember the person who was good to you and the person who said the wrong thing. Always. It will stay all your life. They weren't kind of open and quizzical questions, it was just very much like, why don't you want to do this, this is what you need to do, you're just not doing the right thing, you know, rather than, okay, have you thought about this, and maybe we just need to explore it a bit better. And I think, I, because if you know an individual, you would know how we would react to that, so immediately we're just like this. Whereas actually, if we got to know somebody a bit better and they were just asking the right questions. Even though we're a small family, we mm. have very specific sort of Asian family values, um, where you look after your family and your family come first. So to be put in a position where you're expected to put someone in a care home, that kind of is going against those values. And so to even recognise that and understand that they didn't, um, and that was quite difficult. I think they just didn't understand why we weren't just going down that route with them and all the sort of emotional reasons behind it. You've got to be able to read people and know it's not the right time, we need to leave that now and come back to that. And maybe there's a different way of addressing it. Or indeed, am I the right person to do that? Do I need to? Ask somebody else. Maybe I don't have that relationship that somebody else will have with the family. So that there's such a lot of issues, I don't know, you know where to start. <laughs>